For me, the sound of time is not sad. I love church bells, clocks, watches. And I remember that the first cameras were associated with techniques of carpentry and precision machinery. Cameras, in brief, were clocks for seeing. And maybe Someone very old in me still hears, in the camera's mechanism, the living sound of wood. I have a wonderful story. My son, uh, William, was about four years old and was in the darkroom with me one day. And he asked me, Papa, are you doing a black and white or a color photograph? And I said, no, no, it's black and white. I'll, I'll show it to you. It was, a, it was a portrait of Giuliano Giuman, who was a wonderful painter. And we were both young men at that time. And he was standing in front of a wall where he cleaned his brushes. So the wall was full of, of brush strokes. And I turned on the light, showed the print to my son. And he said, but Papa, you said you were doing a black and white. He saw color in that print, in all the tonalities of the grays and blacks in that wall. I think that's just a, a wonderful story about, about the, the possibilities of, of black and white in, in imagery. I really wanted to be a writer more than a photographer. Well, I fell in love with a, a book by Maud Bodkin called uh, Archetypal Patterns in Poetry. This idea of archetypes is another very important thing to me, especially in, in nature photography and in the way geometry influences the way we see things and is instilled in so many of the objects that we see around us. So how did this all begin for me? Um, my mother is the person who gave me at age 13 her uh, old camera. And I began taking pictures and took it with me to university. I studied at Beloit College in Wisconsin and met there a Hungarian, Michael Simon. I think his lessons in the meaning of photography in our lives is what I think most of even today. The first class, uh, he told us to put tape over the viewfinders of our cameras. He said, okay, it's a relatively sunny day. You just set your cameras at 125th F11 and, and just point at whatever you feel like. And then we'll talk about what you've done the next week. It was evident to us right from the start that each of us had something different to say. And uh, it was truly a revelation. It was a lesson that photography and what I'm most interested in photography is as a tool for self-exploration, basically.
I love to think about the analogies between uh, poetry and photography. There are a lot of similarities. They're both produced on a sheet of paper. They're both a set of symbols uh, framed by whiteness. Poetry has, has its structure through the verse forms, uh, its rhythm through the rhyme scheme and the metrics. Photography has composition, positive negative space, and the, the, the graphic side of it, which creates the rhythm. I think there's an interesting thing about point of view, too, that a long lens has always seemed to me sort of a third-person voice, whereas uh, a wide-angle lens brings you more into the image, more involvement in the image. And the fragmentation of it and the fragility of it. It takes so little to, to, to make a poem not work, just one word out of place, and the same with a photograph. It's just one little thing can ruin it. There is a kind of ritual in getting all the film prepared, loading the film in the, in the various holders, or marking them, uh, making sure you've got all the equipment. I do have to be in a really sort of trance-like nature to be able to, to work properly and to be able to, to respond to, to what is presented before me. I think what draws me when I'm out photographing are, are basically three things. One, there's this object. Uh, two, there's the way the light hits that object. And three, there's what's going on in my head. Which makes me turn and look at that object at that moment in time. It's really an instinctive way of working. I think that's sort of the idea of blindness. I mean, I go out without any conception. I permit myself to, to be open to these very subtle things that, that I respond to.
because of the transient nature of light and how uh, I know it well enough now to know how long it's going to last on that particular object, I frequently find myself having to really rush like a madman to get all the equipment set up to make this photograph uh, before, before it disappears. I confess I make photographs for myself. I found that I'm more interested now in photographing parts of nature where one sees the mark of man. I do not take pictures with the idea of declaiming or, or denouncing something that is that is wrong it sort of comes out in the images naturally this is really where digital and analog photography separate most it's really in the after phase there are so many similarities you, you're having light coming through a lens and registering on a surface it's no longer a surface of film in digital, it's a sensor. So there's not a whole lot of difference in that respect. It's actually later in the, in the post-production where it's so different. In the dark room, you have your physical negative up there in the enlarger, and light again is penetrating the negative. With digital, it just sort of gets out of your hands. It goes into this machine, and it's all transformed, and it ends up on a plotter, on an inkjet thing that, that spews it out on the paper. So it, to me, it just doesn't have the same fascination. I adore the dark room. I, I love closing myself up in a dark place with these soft red lights and listening to good music. I like the isolation, the closing of myself off from the world in this, in this mysterious place. And uh, the, the chemistry, the, the, 
the mixing of these chemicals and the way they're going to influence the paper. It's just so much more appealing to me than sitting at a computer. It can all be done digitally now, it's true, but I still cannot express the joy of being able to see it happen physically and tactily. It's truly magical. Working with chemistry to, to produce an image that's going to appear to me magically in this liquid. The moment when the image starts to appear underneath the developer, there's a lot of a lot of mystery in that to me.
I don't photograph with preconceived ideas. I sort of believe that any object in the world has an ideal time for it to be photographed on one day of the year. And I've found that in my career, something appears to me and I will take that picture and it will send me on a different route. So that if I'm too intent on taking a certain kind of photograph, I might miss that sort of accident that could happen along the way. There's something, I was, I was just, before you came, just wandering around the gallery and looking at these images, and each one takes me back to a time in my life, and each one is filled with memories for me. So it, it, is, it is a nostalgic trip in many ways, uh, and I, I guess, uh, I, I, as long as I am alive, I will be taking pictures because, you know, <laughs> I hope that will be a long time. So as long as I'm taking, it's sort of like as long as I'm taking pictures, I will be alive. That's, that's how I feel.